AFK Journey is the highly anticipated sequel to AFK Arena, and whilst it does share a few similarities, AFK Journey is a significantly different game, as it feels more like an open world isometric RPG that also has a whole new layer of strategic combat depth with its battle grid system. AFK Journey is supported on both PC and mobile, with the PC version which we're going to be playing today having a full screen mode with WASD movement. In this game you play as the legendary mage Merlin, and play through a fully voice acted story which has you seamlessly traverse the vibrant open world of Asperia. Along the way you'll collect heroes of various factions and classes to form multiple powerful teams to take on bosses, solve puzzles, equip with epic gear, and level up as you explore multiple biomes, dungeons and mini-games. Similar to its predecessor, AFK Journey also has an AFK system where you claim rewards whilst you're away. There's a light social system where you'll see other players out in the world, join guilds, partake in PvP, clear the arcane labyrinth, as well as receive generous rewards with weekly in-game events. In this video I'll be giving you my first impressions of AFK Journey as someone who played AFK Arena for over two years and got to ultra late game. This video is sponsored by Lilith Games, so if you like what you see then click the link in the description below to pre-order AFK Journey and receive a ton of epic rewards, including 10 summons, 1000 diamonds, elite hero Lyca, and the protagonist's outfit. So this is AFK Journey. If we click up here, I can have a look at my character. I can change his pose. I can change his outfit. We've also got various different accessories. Cloaks, weapons, headgear. I can also change his skin color, eyes, hairstyle, all of that stuff. So you've basically got like access to full customization at any point. Quick look at the settings menu and you've got all of these options. We're on max graphics. We're also on PC full screen mode because that's where the game looks the best. So let's jump into the actual game, shall we? And as you can see, I can scroll in and out. The game has this, well, you can scroll really far out actually. Oh, and this is the world. And as you can see, the game has this really charming, vibrant art style. Animated environments. Everything feels really smooth so far. Familiar chubby. So let's click on it. Oh. Safe now. The characters are voice acted. We've got him as a new uh, party member. Yeah, the first thing you're going to notice about this game straight away is definitely the art style. It's very striking. It's very unique. So I guess we're going to learn how to battle. So when their portrait lights up, you click on them and they do their special power. Let's taste my power, okay? So we click here and it's like a big AoE. It shows you all of the, uh, the tiles that it hits. Move the camera around very freely and just like... Look at the environment any way you want. Some debris here. Press F. Free the villager. Is this lootable? Yeah, we're, we're also picking up loot along the way. I've just realized this, but you can fully move around with WASD and F is interact. So you don't really need to use your mouse. It's good that the game has controls tailored to PC. Go on lads, get in there. So right now I've got auto battle mode on. We can press times two, speed it up a bit. Big damage. Hogan's gonna pop his ulti. Dead. What's this? We can click on this for a bit of a breakdown in who did the most damage. Oh, we've got some loot here. Rewarded for a bit of exploration. It's kind of weird seeing all of these AFK Arena characters with this full animation and 3D cutscenes. I played that game for so long. Oh, my character's gained some power. Get zapped. And my character's giga strong, apparently. And now Valen's joined our team. You can get back to the mystical house by using your magic. Okay, so we're going to click here. Oh, was that just teleported us back? A little bunny creature. Chibi's girlfriend. I don't remember this character from AFK Arena. Must be a new one. It seems like they've put a lot of effort into the storytelling in this game. Like, There's a lot of dialogue, a lot of voice acting, a lot of cutscenes. Ah, and this is where we can summon new heroes. So, recruit one. This is the... This is the summon animation. We throw out letters. Okay. Our first graveborn. Also a mage. Got something over here. Collect this free reward. If I click this, I've also got AFK rewards. You've been AFK for 41 minutes. Well, I haven't. I have been playing the game, but these rewards just accumulate over time. So now my entire squad follows me around, including the graveborn that I just summoned. 
continue onwards. What's this? A waystone. So I guess we can use this to teleport around. Big red treasure chest. Is it a trap? No. Enemy blocking our way. Explosive barrel is a battlefield mechanic that can be activated. So let's see, how do we activate this barrel? You just click on it. Oh, I see. Let's do it to this one. GG. Big damage. So now we're going to equip our character with some weapons. We can also level him up again. Let's do that. Take him to level 10. Let's take everyone to level 10. Nice. Now our entire squad is level 10. There's a barrel here. Tap and hold F. And that will... Ah, blow up the barrel. Elite challenge. So this wolf is a boss. And at the top you can see he's got multiple health bars. I like that each of the characters have their own animated ults. Looks really cool. Uh, is this like a heal? We're actually losing. We died. We bloody died. We'll, we'll try again. I think I was a little bit slow on using my character's abilities. Maybe we perform better in auto mode than manual. And it's dead. The issue was me controlling it manually, apparently. Put it on auto mode and the game does a better job than me. Open the chest. Walls may appear on certain battlefields. Interesting. Okay, so I suppose we should change our formation accordingly then. Perhaps a more tightly packed formation works better. Yeah, seems like it. Yeah, they're just getting wrecked in the choke point. Bunch of loot. Explode the barrels. Big damage. Oh, leveling up Faye to level 11 has unlocked a new skill. Having a new skill should be a decent power spike. Interesting map, it's put a wall on my side and it's isolated one of my characters, so... What if we do something like... like this? We take out the one on the side of the wall. Oh, then they have to run around and we've flanked them. What's this? Oh, you can loot... Uh, like gatherables in the world. Interesting. And we've made it to the town, Hollistone. Isn't this a cozy looking town as well? I really do like the art style of this game. If you're not one for dialogue, you can always just press this and, sk and skip the story. Probably not recommended though. They have gone through all of the effort of voice acting it and making it quite readable. So lovely visuals. Some kind of loot here. I expected this game to be more instanced. I'm surprised at how seamless the open world is. And I'm definitely surprised by the art style as well. Wait, there's a dog here. You can go up to it. You can give love to the dog. Looks like there's a side quest over here. Quest complete. Unlocked artifacts. Each artifact will grant you a different skill. What's this? Oh, I think the treasures actually appear on the map. Let's go grab it then. Don't forget your artifacts. Okay, yep, yeah, all good. I feel like the battles in this game are quite satisfying, like the sound effects and stuff. Claim all of that. We've got 10 summons. Do some more summons. This time I can recruit 10 at once. Let's see if we get a legendary. Oh, we got a legendary and an epic by the looks of it. Oh, we got Lucius. Uh, what legendary did we get? Cecia, my first legendary. Graveborn Marksman. 5% chance of getting an epic. 18% chance of getting elite. So now I've got rid of my rare characters. And now we've just got epic and elite. Getting strong. Got an emote panel over here. So I guess when this game fully launches, there's going to be other players out in the world and you can like emote with them, socialize with them, like see them running around. I've also just noticed that this game has an active day night cycle. And at night time, when you run around, your character automatically whips out a torch. Nice attention to detail. Go. Oh, that's pretty seamless. There's not even a loading screen for it. Just teleports you right away. So at level 10, you unlock a challenge to basically upgrade your AFK rewards. As someone that played AFK Arena for at least two years consistently, I'm, uh, I'm quite impressed. The battle system in this game seems a bit more satisfying, especially visually. The audiovisual feedback on the uh, on the battles, quite nice. I think anyone that's ever played AFK Arena in the past will definitely like this game. I like that the animations for the ultimate abilities don't last too long. They're just a few seconds, but visually it makes 
quite a big difference, I'd say. You've unlocked instant AFK feature, check it out. This gives you two hours worth of free AFK rewards. You can just pop that every day. If you zoom in and look closely, like there's a lot of attention to detail, isn't there? You've got animals, you've got things moving around, all of the environments animated, NPCs, big damage. So now we're fighting level 26s. We're still shredding them though. So this would put me against level 30s. There's no way we're doing this one. Oh, so close. Ah, infinite health, but I think he's gonna run out of time. 10 seconds and we failed, we ran out of time. Breakdown of the damage, CC is over here with 28k damage. More loot, more summons. So you can uh, move your characters around and choose who you want to be focused. So you want your enemies to be targeting your main tank. Golden Wheat Shire, let's see if there's any treasure in the fields. Nice, grab the treasure like this, go. I feel like you've got more control over your team in this game compared to AFK Arena, simply due to the grid system, and you also having more information. Jeez, just running through the world, there's so much treasure popping up. Tactical drill? Okay. Specific heroes are eligible to participate in tactical drills. So he's got the aggro, and then this one behind, I'm guessing. So these tactical drills are basically uh, tutorial quests, or quests to better explain the game's mechanics to you. Oh, now I zoom out, more of the world is displayed. So over here we've got a level 35 zone, level 30, level 28, 45, and I bet this is just gonna keep expanding as the game releases more and more content. So to unlock the different areas, there's various different unlock conditions, which you can see by clicking on this icon. And you also get additional rewards for 100% completion. Okay. Treasure found, level 25 weapon and ring. It's quite satisfying when you loot a treasure chest, like the way it all pops out. Short wall is a type of wall that blocks your movement, but rangers can shoot over it. So I suppose we want the melee to go as close to running around the wall as possible. I have the ranged characters here. Yes, now the tanks have the aggro from the rangers as well. I like the addition of these obstacles on the battlefield. I'm still early in the game, but I can imagine later on these battlefield obstacles play an interesting part in your decision making when it comes to strategy. We got another boss battle here. Zerg down the boss. Easy. Grab the weapon for the quest. Oh, this is guild chat. World chat. Uh, team up chat. Pump some levels into Cecia since she's my strongest character. What's this, new player? Is this another player? It is. And you can see their combat power as well. So earlier I was right, you do indeed see other players out in the world. What can we do here? Oh, this, basically use, use things at the right time, I guess. Now, there it is. Looks like there's gonna be another puzzle here. Superior apple. So let's put the apple here. Okay, I like that there's lots of little puzzles out in the world. Another player, Huge Gamer. Nice name. So now we've done that quest, we can open another region, I think. Blocked by a Miasma Guard. Complete AFK stage 15. GG. Now, can we pass? We can. But first we've got a challenge waiting for us. Miasma cleared, two out of five. Unlocked new area. So I guess every single new area that you unlock, you've got to like clear the miasma. What's this? We got a little cat over here. Give some love to the cat. Can we do any more summons? Oh, there it is. We got a gold. Nice, we got Rowan. I remember Rowan was like an S tier support in AFK Arena. So hopefully he's still good in this game. Change up my wish list a little bit. I've gifted myself a few invite letters so I can build a full team of legendaries. Oh, we got Brutus. We got Erwin. Now I have a lot more characters. Ah, so because I've got a bunch of copies of Lucius, I can click this and ascend him. So now he's Elite Plus, and that makes him Epic. 
Okay, so some characters just straight up start at epic, whereas others they need to be ascended. Let's check out the stargazing. Perhaps this opens up a different pool of heroes. Hypergen or Celestial Hero for free in the Stargaze Station. It would be nice if you could actually click on these heroes and get more information about them before you've made your hero choice. In the hero choice window, there's no option to actually click on these heroes and see what they do, what their name is, what their class, what their class is. So I feel like there's missing information here. We can take her even further. We can take her to legendary. Nice. If you've played AFK Arena before, you're gonna be very familiar with a lot of the abilities that the characters in this game have. Obviously not everything's gonna be the same, but I'm sure there's definitely some similarities. The Erwin Lycra combo, for example, that seems to be uh, fairly similar. I've just unlocked something called the Dream Realm and it seems to be fighting a boss. I think we're gonna run out of time before we actually kill it. We got it to 43%. So the more damage you do to it, the more rewards that you get. So you've got five attempts to take on this boss and it resets after a certain amount of hours out into the world. So we're going to make a very quick... Wait, what? The one shot is well documented. Go take a look. Oh, if you massively out level uh, enemies in the world, you can just one shot them without even triggering a battle. That's kind of cool. So if you take a long time away from the game and you just log in to collect your AFK rewards, you outlevel everything. You can basically just run around and one hit all of the mobs. We failed that one. So this is trying to teach me to split the damage because if one tank takes damage from all four, he can't sustain it. So I need to split it between the two tanks. Yeah, pretty much. I like these technical drill missions. Can I one shot you? Yep. Thank you for the loot. Don't mind if I do. Obviously, I'm massively overleveled at this point compared to where I, where I should be. So this one, I can attack them, but they can't attack me. Basically demonstrating the power of the short wall. Oh, this is a multi-stage boss battle. So like you've got the first wave and then the next wave just instantly comes afterwards. This next one has five rounds. The game wants me to try auto root. Let's try it. What does auto root do? Oh, you literally just click where you want to go and it will auto path you there. Auto battle, go. So I've clicked auto battle mode. I'm guessing it's just gonna keep progressing through each stage until it can no longer progress, which is quite useful for these AFK stages, especially if you've over leveled them heavily. Arena is available. Let's check out the arena. People you can challenge, let's challenge this person. My team's way too powerful. We can also refresh our opponents a few times. Join a guild, let's join this one. Welcome. Oh, you've actually got like a guild hall that you can run around and explore. That's cool. A group mode where guild members join forces to defeat enemies on the battle drills map and receive generous rewards. That's cool. Here you can have a look at each of the guild members. Right now we're the number one guild, but I think we're also the only guild playing the guild quests. What's this? Honor duel. Let's try this. The lazy peon vs game addict. It's not going too hot for me. I guess we took the L in Honor Duel. I've got a decent enough feel for the game at this point and I don't want to progress too much further to give spoilers. So we're going to wrap up this first impressions here. So after checking out AFK Journey, my first impressions are as follows. Pros, I love this game's unique, charming art style. The game feels highly polished from the animations to sound effects and UI transitions. I was surprised at the lack of loading screens. The entire world seems to be open and even using fast travel was seamless. AFK Journey has a much better focus on story compared to AFK Arena and is also fully voice acted with cutscenes. This game also has some interesting potential combat depth with the grid system combined with obstacles and interactable battlefield objects. I can imagine the strategic depth in this game becomes quite significant at endgame. I like that you're rewarded for exploring the world with map completion and random puzzles, and AFK Journey is much better suited for PC players with its full screen mode and 
controls compared to AFK Arena. Cons. When choosing heroes for your wishlist, I think the game does a poor job of displaying key information such as class and role. Instead, you need to exit and go into a separate menu to look up this info, which isn't super intuitive for new players. People who dislike Gacha will likely not enjoy AFK Journey as it's a key part of the game, and I personally dislike that the maximum time for AFK rewards for new players is initially capped to 16 hours. I think 40 8 hours would be much more reasonable. Overall, despite being a very different game, I definitely prefer AFK Journey over AFK Arena, as it allows you to become much more immersed into the world of Asperia with its open world design, improved combat, improved storytelling and gorgeous art style. The thing that stuck out to me the most with this game was that it felt very polished due to the animations, sound effects and attention to detail. That being said, AFK Journey isn't a game for everyone, if you're not open to RNG, gacha mechanics, or opening the game every day to claim AFK rewards, then it might not be for you. However, compared to other similar games in the genre, I think this is definitely going to be right up there in terms of popularity when it comes to hero collector strategy RPGs. Although many people tend to spend a lot of money on these kind of games, typically you can do pretty well free to play if you're willing to be consistent and log in every day over a long period of time. But that's it for this video, as always let me know your thoughts on AFK Journey in the comments below. How does this game compare to AFK Arena? Do you prefer the new gameplay and art style? Shout out to Lilith Games for sponsoring this video, and don't forget to pre-order the game via my link in the description below for epic rewards. Help us out with a like to appease the algorithm gods, social media on screen, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.